Uh, hi, my name is Julian. Uh, I work at Blockbit as a front-end developer. And today I'm talking about building Docker images. Because several years ago, I started to use Docker, as most devs probably did. And once I got more experience with it, I noticed something. That was strange. My Docker images were kind of huge and they took ages to build. So I started to research <clears throat> because even a brand new MacBook could only hold about 200 of those images or my cloud server could only hold, hold about 20 of those images, which is yeah really bad actually. So I read a lot of blog posts, documentation, and I realized something. Doc images are actually easy to build, but it's also easy to build them in a very inefficient way. And that's why we are talking about how to do it the efficient way. And you might ask, why even bother? And the first thing I would say is, I like to save time because I don't like to sit in front of builds the whole day. I mean, I like to grab a coffee in between, but at one point it's enough coffee. I like to save power because I have to pay an electricity bill and I don't want my CPU to spin at 100% load all the time. I want to save space because a two terabyte SSD is still kind of expensive. And also, yeah, storage on network servers is yeah sometimes expensive. And I want to save traffic because I'm going on vacation next week and when I'm sitting on the beach and doing an emergency hotfix, I don't want to ship like a two gigabyte image via my mobile connection. So I like to save traffic. Let's talk about saving time and power. There are a few things we need to keep in mind. First of all, Docker works with layers. So every component you run inside a Docker image creates a new layer. Those are built on each other. The good thing is, layers can be cached. But still keep in mind that every layer you add is stored in a final image that can create huge images. Let's take a look at a very simple example. I'm starting from a node 16 image here, defining my work directory, copying over the whole app, because why not? We run npm install as you typically, typically do. And we run the build, and finally, we define a starting command. And the problem here is, we can only cache to the point where something changes. And since we copied the whole app here, the first step where something changes is the third one. So we can only cache up until this point, which is kind of sad because the from and the work directory is kind of instant, instant uh, once you fetch the image. So we can optimize that by actually writing a bit more and execute much less. So let's have the same example again. We start from node 16, define a work directory, but now we only copy package JSON and package log JSON. And instantly we run npm install because turns out we only need package JSON and JSON log to run the install. After that, finally, we copy over the app, but not the whole app, just the stuff we really need, which is the source directory. Finally, we run the build again and define the working directory. <laughs> Sorry, the uh, starting command. Now the good thing is, we can actually cache all the way to this point. Because for 99%, I would say, when you change something inside your app, it only changes in the source directory. And we don't always change something in package JSON. And npm install always takes a long time to run and also consumes traffic. So we can save that whenever we do a rebuild of our image. And we start directly at copy the source directory. Now let's continue with saving space and traffic. 
talking about saving space, the easiest one is to use the right base image. So let's do a quick comparison. I'm using the base node 16 image here, which comes with a compressed size of 332 megabyte. For comparison, we could also use the node 16 Alpine image, which takes up, which takes up only 39 megabyte is already quite a bit of saving. The next thing I want to talk about with saving is multi-stage builds because actually not a lot of people know them and use them. I'm doing the whole example again so we're defining the node 16 image here, the work directory and so on and so on. But you see the change in the first line we actually define this node 6 image as our builder image. This is just a name, you can name it anywhere or anything you want. But now comes the cool part. We can actually start from a new image here. In that case, I'm switching to node 16 with the Alpine. And the nice thing is everything before the last from statement is really left behind and doesn't end up in your final image. So let's continue. We define a work directory. And now we can copy over something from a past build. So I'm using here the builder image. From the builder, I'm copying over the distribution folder, which was built during the build process. And I'm copying into the work directory. And finally, I'm just spinning up an HTTP server, which serves all of that. Now, how far could we improve on that? So I'm using just uh, the standard Angular build, which is just one page Angular application. And I'm building that with Node 16, just a single stage build. And that end up, ends up in a 1.3 gigabyte image, which is huge. Now, how far can we take this by just switching one line and moving from Node 16 to Node 16 Alpine? Actually, it turns out quite a lot, because we saved almost half. We end up with 670 megabyte. But now, I'm doing everything of that again with the multi-stage build, so two steps. I'm using Node 16 as the builder, and I'm switching over to Node 16 Alpine to finally run the built Angular application. And by doing that, we end up with 130 megabyte of size which is still large, but with compression and so on, I think that's quite handleable. And when saving about space, we also have to talk about files. Because files can be tricky when you work with them in Docker. First of all, really only try to copy stuff that you actually need and use a git ignore and a docker ignore file, so it really uh, yeah, brings down the build context but also avoid duplicating files. And you might think, why should I duplicate files anyway? Well, you might not do it on purpose, but you do it by accident. So let's have a look how you might actually be duplicating your files. First of all, by moving them. So we all know this example, like you have your environment, JSON, um, and you have your production JSON and you're moving it so you can use it during the build. But the thing is, by moving it, you're not yeah, just renaming it in that case, but the file actually exists in the previous layer now as env.prod.json, but also in the current layer now as env.json. So you actually duplicated it. And as we know, every step lands in your final image. Deleting is also very tricky with files because, for example, you copy over, I don't know, a database dump and you have it in a zip file. And you work with that and by the end you say, oh, let's uh, bring the size down, I'm going to remove yeah, those zip files. But actually, it's not really removed because it's only removed in the layer you just executed that and not in the layer before, it still exists there. Same goes with permission, uh, basically anywhere you change a file. It exists in the new layer with updated permissions and in the old layer with all the old permissions. 
So we have to remember that every layer is stored in your image. Every layer creates a copy of a file when you use a file. And to really leave stuff behind, you have to use multi-stage builds, as I just showed you. Now, another cool thing I want to show you is that you can actually start from scratch. And that means just a very empty Linux image that ships with every Docker installation. But it's as empty as it can go because it doesn't even contain a file system. It's just the root, nothing else. And it runs statically compiled Linux binaries. So how would that look like? Just like this. We use from, as we do with like a node image, but we use from scratch. And then we just define a command that's run when we start everything. And in that case, it's just an executable. That of course wouldn't run because yeah, the executable is probably not there. But for example, this is the base Debian image. It starts from scratch. It adds the file system files. And when you start it, it just runs the bash. And actually another cool thing is the difference between copy and add. When you add something in a Docker file, you can use a tarball and it gets extracted on the fly. So let's have a bit of a bigger example here. I've wrote a Hello World uh, yeah, program inside an image. And here I'm just piping everything into hello.c and in the end I'm compiling it to hello world. I'm using Alpine here as a builder and as you probably guess, I'm using a multi-stage build. In the end, I'm switching to a from scratch image and then I'm copying from the builder, the hello world executable we just compiled. And in the end, we're just gonna run it. I'm not switching to a terminal right now, but you can pause here and write that down. It really, yeah, prints hello world. The nice thing is the final image only takes up 130 kilobytes, which is nothing more than the actual executable because Every Docker installation comes with this scratch file, so it's 100% um, reusable. So you don't have to ship it anywhere, it's just like it doesn't exist, because it's there anyways. So don't be scared, the next slide is just a wall of text. But this is actually the smallest Docker image I could come up with that serves a full Angular application. And you can see in the first part, I'm actually just building the Angular application. In the second part, I'm using the HTTPD, which is a very simple web server that you can easily build to a static executable. And in the third step, so that's a three-step multi-stage build, I'm just copying the stuff together into a scratch file and in the end starting yeah, the web server. Now, I few things to note here. First of all, to be fair, this only works with hash routing on Angular because we, yeah, DHTTP doesn't uh, support uh, URL rewrites. But the cool thing is the whole image, which is really just self-contained, it doesn't use a, a volume or anything, really the whole image has an uncompressed size of 5.01 megabyte. And that's with the whole Angular application in it. The Angular application actually only takes up 4.8 megabytes, so everything around it is really, yeah, really, really small. And the last thing is props to Frolore and Lippan, uh, who came up with the idea of, uh, yeah, compiling DHTP to a static binary. I took that idea further and extended it with the Angular part here. And we end up with a really, really amazing image that's really small, effective. Yeah, just the perfect image for me. So things to keep in mind when building Docker images are copy really only what you need, use the right base image, of course, and really, really try to use multi-stage builds.
Thank you. That was building uh, efficient Docker images. I'm Julian Handel and I work at Blackpit.